After all the delays, we are finally able to watch the Winter Olympics. For some of us, the Winter Games are even more fun to watch than the Summer Games. There are so many exciting events, but just as many rules that athletes must follow. Today, we are going to check out some of these rules that Winter Olympic athletes must follow. There are routine rules and also pandemic rules. Let's get to them all. First, rules on wearing masks. Okay, let's start off with one of the rules that are brand new, thanks to the world events we face at the moment. Anyone else tired of being a part of a historical world? world event, or is it just me? Anyway, the pandemic's still here, and massive events like the Winter Olympics have to take precautions to make sure that it doesn't spread inside their bubble and ruin the entire event. One way they are doing this is by asking athletes to wear masks when they aren't competing, but the rule did make a slight change recently when the International Olympic Committee decided to change the rule slightly and allow athletes who won gold, silver, or bronze to take their masks off for parts of the podium celebrations so that the world would be able to see their emotions and that they could show their face during this special moment. They will receive a sign from the officials when they are allowed to take off their masks, then they will have the podium ceremony and the photos and the officials will once again signal when it is time to put the masks back on. Later, they can also take photos with their teams or as individuals without masks on, as long as they maintain social distance towards the media taking the photos and any other medalists that could be around. Next, much stricter COVID protocols. The rules for COVID protocols and precautions are much stricter at the Winter Olympics than they were at the Summer games. Everyone who is participating at the games must remain in the closed loop system that is provided for them. That includes not only the athletes, but anyone else working at the games. For example, the volunteers who complete various tasks. The closed loop system even includes transportation, and it means that everyone gets a daily COVID test. They have also asked that athletes and others that are in the bubble maintain a safe distance from each other and avoid any physical interactions, like hugs or high fives or handshakes. They really want to avoid cross-contamination between athletes, especially those coming from different countries. And it makes sense. Imagine if one of the severely contagious variants was to run through the Olympic Village. If they weren't being careful, many of the athletes could quickly get sick, and it could completely ruin the games and be dangerous to the athletes who are competing. It can turn into a nightmare, but those are just the COVID rules. Even before the pandemic, the Olympics have had loads of rules for athletes. Let's check out some of those. Next up, no backflips allowed in figure skating. This move might look seriously cool and incredible incredibly hard, but it won't get the skaters any points, and some points might even be deducted from their routine if they did a backflip. This is because a backflip is considered an illegal figure skating move. The thinking behind it is that it isn't a real jump and that skaters generally need to land on both feet instead of one, and it is a pretty dangerous move too. That doesn't always stop skaters from trying it, to the delight of viewers everywhere. For example, at the 1998 Nagano Olympics, Sharia Bonnelly did a backflip in her figure skating routine. She even managed to nail the one-foot landing but it still wasn't considered a legal jump and she ended up in 10th position in the games but probably much higher up in fans hearts. And next, big air snowboarders must spin in different directions. Speaking about crazy flips, the big air snowboarding event is packed full of them. These athletes do massive jumps and flips from incredible heights. Plus their runs are generally done at extreme speeds too. And like that isn't difficult enough all on its own, they also have some rules that they need to follow if they want to qualify. They each get the opportunity to do three runs on the course and get the best scores possible in order to get to podium contention. But there is a catch. They get to choose which two runs are considered, but these two runs can't be the same. The athletes' two winning runs that eventually are set for consideration needs to have spins going in two different directions, not the same one. If you have two brilliant runs where your spins both go in a clockwise direction and a third where they're going in a counterclockwise, then you need to pick one from the one direction to go with the one in the other direction. That is a lot to think about and consider when planning your runs. But hey, no one ever said that the Olympics would be easy, did they? Which Winter Olympics event are you most excited to see? Do you have a favorite athlete among those who are competing? Let us know in the comments section. We love to hear all of your opinions. Next up, we'll check out rules for politics at the Games, for endorsement deals, and so much more. Next, endorsement deal rules for Olympic athletes. One of the biggest ways that athletes make money while they are competing all over the world is through their sponsorship and endorsement deals that they have with various companies. For some athletes, these paid partnership deals are the only reason why they can actually afford to make it to the Olympics in the first place. But both the Winter and the Summer Games have strict rules when it comes to what an athlete can share about his endorsement deals while competing in the Games. And that is a big fat zero. They aren't allowed to share anything during the Games. Obviously, these athletes are allowed to have them and get paid for them, but they are never allowed to mention their endorsement deals while the Games are on. The companies also aren't allowed to promote the athlete at that time either. They want to make sure that it is all about the talent and not about who supports them. Up next, 
politics need to be left outside of the Olympic bubble. There is an entire rule, Rule 50, which prohibits the Olympic Games from being used in any way as a platform for the political beliefs of athletes. They say that this rule is not to take away the voice of any other athletes, but rather to make sure that the game should be completely focused on sport. They even took the rule further to include that athletes are not allowed to express any form of protest on the playing field during any of the ceremonies or in the Olympic Village. This is not a rule that has a lot of supporters, and it has faced a lot of pushback. But, as of now, the rule stands. Next, social media is also very limited. I don't see that these athletes have loads of time to spend on things like social media while they are getting ready to compete. But even in their downtime, they probably won't be hosting many live events on posting loads of videos. There are lots of restrictions that everyone who has access to the private areas of the Olympics has to follow. That includes the athletes, their coaches, any officials, or anyone else who is working behind the scenes at the games. They aren't allowed to post anything that can be seen as a breach of privacy to anyone else, anything that interferes with the competition or the ceremonies. They can especially not post anything that can violate any security that is in place for the games. Any videos or pictures that show the fields or the backstage areas, for example, the areas where only the coaches and the athletes are allowed, are a strict no. The athletes are allowed to use their social media and post on it during the games, but they just need to stick to the rules that are set out. And skeleton athletes need to be on the sled when they cross the finish line. Another of the crazier events at the Winter Olympics, in my opinion, the skeleton event looks super scary. Athletes throw themselves down an icy hill and go down head first, many times at what looks like breakneck speeds. But if they need to, they are allowed to get off the sled and push it or move it. They might lose speed or have some other issue, and they won't be disqualified for getting off the sled. The only rule is that they have to be back on it when they cross the finish line. Lastly, rules on hockey fights. In regular NHL games, fights are standard and happen often, but they aren't in the Olympic hockey games. The fact that they are so rare might be thanks to some of the strict rules that they have. If a fight breaks out, then both players will get penalized. They are at least fair about it because the player who started the fight will get a five-minute penalty and the person who is retaliating gets only two. Are there any other interesting Winter Olympic rules that we missed? Share them in the comments, and thanks for watching.